Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at Prog1 and Prog2. Um, okay, so one, in one of the other videos we looked at Prog1 and we saw that it allowed us to... Oh, I'm on the wrong machine. Let me just jump over here. We saw that it allowed us to run a bunch of forms in order and then the last, the value of the last um, form inside the program would be the uh, the result, if you like, of the entire program. So if we did uh, program one, two, three, we can see that three is what the whole form evaluates to. So we've got this little function here, which does serious business, some serious calculation. We're going to add 10 to something, which is mind-blowing on today's very limited machines. So let's say we pass in nil. So if we pass in nil, uh, this is going to see if this eval is true. Um, nil is not true. So it's going to fail and it's going to come down here. It's going to print out. I need something to work with. And because print evaluates to whatever it was printing, um, it returns that. So you can see here we got it printed out and then it returned it. If we do pass in a value, um, we don't get quite what we want here because what it would be nice to do is return this value. Um, but we want to do it, we want to print this first, then we want to do the computation, and then we want to print we survived, but we also want to return this value. And we're, um, we're inside this if here. We could assign this out to a variable. We could put a, a let statement out here and say a is nil, uh, and then we could set a to that. And then at the end, we could just return a, so we'd do that like down here. But that's kind of messy. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to use prog1. What this does is it evaluates exactly like, um, actually, my mistake, we're going to use prog2. Um, it evaluates exactly like prog1, but it's going to evaluate this form. It's going to evaluate this form next and keep hold of the result. It's going to evaluate this form, and then the result of the whole thing is going to be the second thing here. If you look down in the uh, mini buffer down here, you can see the signature proc2, the first form, the result, and then the rest of the stuff. So if we compile this and run again, you can see we get fired up the engines, and then few we survived, and then the value is returned. Um, and we can see that this was done in order, actually, if we use print. Um, and now we fire up the engines, we print the result of our, of our difficult computation, and then this gets evaluated, which prints out few we survived, and then this entire form evaluates to the result of this second, that's the two in prog2, uh, this second form inside the prog form. It's kind of weird to say this stuff out loud, but it's, uh, it's simple ones you've got in, in your head. And uh, prog1, is very similar. In fact, but instead it's going to return the result as its result, the first form, the whatever the first form evaluates to. So if we compile this and run it again, you can see that this thing ran first, and then this thing ran, is our second line here, then this thing ran, and then it returned the string firing up the engines, which is the result of this form here. So again, I, I can't give the best examples of where, where this is useful, um, but just it's something to have in your pack of tools because occasionally you're going to be generating, normally with a macro when it comes to um, prog and prog1 and prog2 type things, you'll have a macro where you want the side effect and something in a certain order. And in that point, it's just really handy to have because it just avoids you having to use some extra lets or variables and assignments and things like this. Right? So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.